Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how Newton's second law can be applied to systems that have multiple parts and we're going to uh, look at how to incorporate frictional forces. So in this example, right, uh, very similar to the previous video I just made, we have this man here and he's going to push against this yellow box for whatever reason. Uh, he's going to apply a 200 Newton force to the right. We're going to try to calculate the acceleration of the system and the, the force on the 20 kilogram mass, the force exerted between these two surfaces, uh, assuming a frictional coefficient of 0.3. Okay. So, in the previous video here, I talked about all the different types of free bodies we can draw for the system, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw a free body, very similar to, I did, to what I did last time, of the entire system here. So we're going to cut, we're going to take a look at this, all of it. And again, for all the same reasons I talked about in my last video, a free body of the entire system here will not have that unknown normal force in between it. So it should make it kind of a, a relatively simple equation. So I'm going to uh, clone that thing. All right, start looking at the free body. Go ahead and draw it a little bit left here. All right, so the person is applying this force to the right of 200 Newtons. <clears throat> Go ahead and put that one in there first. Uh, the system has a certain weight. I'm going to go ahead and put a gravitational force down, mg. Now, because I only put one gravitational force vector, I need to take note I'm going to use both masses here. That mass is going to be 50 kilograms. We have a normal force, again, you know, right here, surfaces in contact. The normal force will be up. Now, again, that normal is really the sum of, of the two normals, one on the first box, one on the second. And because we're including friction in the problem, we're going to have a frictional force to the left. Remember that friction always opposes motion. All right? So uh, I think that's it. And let's talk about that frictional force. So hopefully we've uh, watched my video uh, on friction, and we know that the frictional force in general here can be written coefficient of friction 0.3 times the normal force. Now, let me talk about that when I say it can be written. Hopefully you've watched my video here. There's really three cases with friction. I want to kind of go back through and review this. Um, this point three, although I didn't specify, I meant that to be a sliding or kinetic coefficient of friction. And what that means is that as long as these boxes are sliding, the normal, the frictional force will be 30% of the normal force. That, that's true if the box is sliding. Imagine that this person, however, <clears throat> applied not a 200 Newton force, but just a 2 Newton force. If they applied a 2 Newton force, this box would not start moving. Friction easily would be enough to just keep this thing locked down. If this force were just 2 Newtons, the frictional force would equal only 2 Newtons, not 0.3 times the normal. If this force went to, say, 4 Newtons, the frictional force, again, would equal 4 Newtons this force went to say 10 newtons, the frictional force would be 10 newtons. This, this is going to be true. This force will increase and therefore the frictional force here will increase up to a certain value. Right, that value typically is called is the maximum frictional uh, force. And the maximum frictional force is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal. In this example, that coefficient of static friction might be something like 0.35 or 0.4 or something. Stack, uh, static coefficients of friction are always higher than kinetic coefficients of friction. Right? Then once this force gets over that value, over the maximum frictional force, the box, the box will start sliding. So the sliding example is uh, what I'm referring to here. This thing is, in fact, going to be sliding, no problem at all. Uh, I'll, I'll work some other videos here where whether the motion is... Uh, whether there is going to be motion or not will be unknown. But here we're going to assume there is motion and the two boxes are sliding. So the frictional force is going to be 0.3 times the normal. And typically when you're dealing with friction, you're going to need the normal force. So I'm going to start this by uh, sum of all forces in the y direction equals 0, taking note that this thing is not accelerating in the y direction. I'm going to go ahead and call up positive. Looking at my, my free body here, there's only two forces in the y direction, the normal and this gravitational force. So we're going to have plus n 
minus mg, and that's it, equals zero. So the normal in this problem is equal to mg, which is going to be 50 times 9.8, Right, which is 490 newtons. Right. Now we know that the frictional force, remember it's 0.3 times the normal, that's going to be 0.3 times 490 newtons. That is going to be equal to 147 newtons. Next step. Now we'll go ahead and, and apply a Newton's second law in the x direction. So sum of all forces x direction equals ma. We're calling to the right the positive x direction. So we again, we look at our free body. We note that there's a 200 Newton force to the right. There is the frictional force to the left, which we know to be uh, 147. So minus 147 Newtons equals all right, M is the mass of the system. I'm going to go ahead and put 50 kilograms times A. That equation is easily solved. I'm not going to write the algebra down for it. I'm just going to get it solved. Oops. And I get when I work that out, I get about 1.06 uh, meter per second squared. I'm just going to round that. So the acceleration approximately 1 meter per second squared. All right, I think in the previous example we had uh, 4 meter per second squared. So the frictional force is a substantial uh, effect on this problem. All right, next. So now we want to be able to find the force between these. Right? So what we want to do is we now want to draw a free body of either the 20 kilogram mass or the 30 kilogram mass. And I think I did the 20 last time in the previous video. I'm going to do this one this time. So I'm going to draw a free body of that. That is now going to be my system. And so when you draw a free body, what you do, you're going to want to recopy it. I've got the advantage of I can use my uh, program here to do this. Do not try to, to use your original picture here for the free body. Keep one picture nice and clean. That picture is used to describe the problem. Your free bodies, you want to be something separate. And again, now you know we've got several things going on here. So I'm going to go back and just like I did last time, I'm going to put a whoops. I'm going to label these masses here. I'm going to call this mass one and this mass two. All right, and I'm going to use that when I label normals and things like that. All right, so forces on mass one. This 200 Newton force to the right is acting on mass one. Oops, I can do a better job than that. All right, 200 Newtons. Here we're going to have a normal between these masses. That normal would be to the right on mass two. It's going to be to the left on mass one. That's the normal between one and two. So that's probably what I would call it, N12. We're going to have a gravitational force down, mg. Now I'm going to take note here that that mg, that's going to be 30 kilograms. We've got a normal here. That normal is between mass 1 and the ground. So when I label it, I probably actually would label it like N1g, normal between mass 1 and the ground. We also have a frictional force acting along here. And that force is going to be to the left. That's the frictional force acting only on mass 1. So I'm going to go ahead and put a F1 on there. So that free body's got you know, quite a bit more going on. It's important that we be able to recognize every force uh, and, and get it in the correct direction and labeled. Now, this force 1 is not going to equal the 147 newtons like it was before. The 147 newtons uh, is the effect of both masses, the friction acting here and here. So we're going to have to calculate that value. And we're going to get it from this value, from this guy right here. So I'm going to start with some forces y direction equals 0, up positive. And that's going to give me normal 1g, right between 1 and the ground, minus mg equals 0. So I'm kind of running out of room, but normal 1g is going to equal to mg. <clears throat> and again, that was a subscript, that g. 
and again, this G here, let me just restate, that's just standing for ground, doesn't have anything to do with gravity directly. And I get for that normal, I get 294 newtons. Right? The frictional force, F1, we can now calculate. That's going to be 0 0.3 times 294 newtons. I get 88.2 newtons. I'm just going to approximate that to 88 newtons. And now we can write our newton second law for uh, the x direction. Sum of all forces x direction equals ma, right positive. So I'm looking at my free body here for forces in the x direction. All right, that's this one, this one, and this one. So what we're going to have is plus 200 newtons minus F1, which we just calculated at 88 newtons, minus normal 1, 2, and that's what we're looking for, equals M, which is 30 kilograms, times A, the acceleration of the system, which we already calculated at 1 meter per second squared. So normal 1, 2 is going to equal... I'm not going to bother doing the algebra because I don't have room on my sheet anyway. I'll, I'll leave that for the viewer. It's going to be 200 minus 88 minus 30. I get 82 newtons. All right, should get the same thing if we do a free body of mass two. So I'm going to leave that as an exercise to the viewer here uh, to check your understanding of this. If you draw a free body of mass two, right, the one that I call normal one two will be to the right. You'll have a frictional force to the left. You'll have a normal, uh, which will point up. And I think that's it. Let me go through this again. A normal at this surface to the right, a normal at this surface, which is up, the mg is down, and a frictional force to the left. Some forces in the y direction first to get the normal force along the ground. Then you can calculate by 0.3 times the uh, normal force to get the frictional force. Some forces in the x direction to calculate the normal between these. Keep in mind that the acceleration is already known. Hope this video helps. Have a great day.